I mean, I, at this point, I, reading the sort of legacy media is just depressing. Uh, I accidentally, once in a while, will we'll go see like Google News or whatever, or, you, you know, Yahoo News or whatever, some sort of random thing. And I'm like, this is just, I, I mean, frankly, the quality of the propaganda isn't even good. Um, I, look, if you're going to do propaganda, at least make it entertaining. And I find it's dull, boring, it's, you know, and just not even well written. Well, that's right. They'll put out one thing and then they all parrot it. It's a yeah, dog. It's like lazy box. propaganda. It's like work harder. We've got Andrew Tate here as well. Andrew, how are you? Andrew, your, your mic, is it working? You got to unmute bottom left corner. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. yeah. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm good friend. I'm in the middle of a poker game, but since this is the battle for humanity against the Satanists with its constant deception of the populace, I thought I would jump in and say hello to everybody. Your thoughts, hello. Andrew, we had, we had your brother on earlier, Tristan come on earlier. Your thoughts on Alex Jones being back on X? I'd rather hear his thoughts on Elon Musk being the biggest maverick of the last 500 years. I'm not kissing ass here. Elon, you, I mean, you're, you've got big ones, man. On every front, you are literally overturning the entire power structure. I was just going to say this and let Andrew get in, but I, have, I just want to say this while you're here. I, I mean, you are literally changing the entire paradigm and you've definitely got the system scared. And, and so everybody needs to support X. Everybody needs to support the sponsors on X. I personally am doing all my Christmas shopping this year with all the great gadgets and stuff that are on X, but I'm going to shut up now. But I would imagine since they're talking about Alex Jones, I'd like to hear Andrew Tate talk about or ask questions to Elon Musk. Yeah, well, Alex is certainly a, a friend of mine. I've known him for a long time, and I'm extremely happy he's back. I've celebrated that publicly, but Alex nailed it. Elon is taking the biggest risk here. It takes unlimited energy to propagate lies. You have to continually repeat them, and you have to continue to try and falsify information and hide the truth to keep lies afloat. And this simple purchase... You call it simple. The purchase of a simple website has literally cracked the matrix in real time, and it becomes extremely difficult now to run the psyops they were previously running and enslave the populace, which is their primary goal. So Elon is a hero, absolutely. And the risks you are taking, Elon, I don't think many people at home actually understand the gravity of the risks you are taking because your ability to speak freely is heavily leveraged against your insignificance. You're only allowed to speak if nobody listens to you. And if you get big, and people start listening, they're going to come at you hard. And I think I'm not completely versed, but from what I understand, Elon's already suffering the lawfare tactics, which they're going to do. They're going to keep pulling out the hat to try and slow him down. Or oh, oh, Andrew, let me interrupt before I forget. I don't give any attention. The same law firm that came after me with these PR firms. You've just dropped out. I think Alex you just dropped out. Anyone else can... Yeah, uh, I think he got a it's call. Now you got a call. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. There is a three-letter agency running this. Not all of them, but let's just say it starts with a C and it ends with an A. Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. And there's liberal NGOs which will sponsor agents of the Matrix. They'll sponsor females to end up in a house party and then lie to try and then put you in a Romanian jail cell and get you sitting with the cockroaches in a dungeon. And it's a very scary world where you get to a point where you're t only time trying to tell the truth and they're going to punish you for that using endless lawfare. And this battle has only just begun. But the matrix has truly cracked now, and it's going to be extremely hard to lie to us like they did before with X the way it currently is. And I think it came at exactly the right time. I almost, without trying to sound pessimistic, there was a point where I kind of felt like I was losing hope. You couldn't tell the truth about anything. Everything was a lie. Everything from head to toe was a lie. And they're trying to lock us all back in our houses again, and we can finally talk about it. It's truly heroic. And Elon's taking massive risk, and the respect I have for him for doing that is, is enormous. Absolutely. I mean, this is what happened. I'm going to shut up. So I want to hear from Elon, but this is so historic. Elon Musk's courage, and it's true, I'm saying, has broken the back of the globalists. They'll, they'll never be able to turn this around again unless they have a nuclear war. We, we, Elon Musk has broken their back. Yeah. Well, I guess some people are afraid to die, but I am not. That, and you know what? It's kind of crazy because I was talking to someone the other day and I was explaining. They were asking about my seizure, how they took all my houses, all my money, all my cars, blah, blah. And I said, you never truly own anything on this earth anyway. You can have a piece of paper that says you own it, but if you piss off the government structures, they just get a judge to stamp a different piece of paper and you no longer own it. The only thing you own is your soul and your integrity. And this is the one thing they cannot take away from you no matter what they do to you. And that is the best feeling on earth. It doesn't matter if you can sell your soul to the devil and repeat what they want you to say, but then you truly own nothing. And yeah, I think I that agree. as history books look back on this pivotal moment, when X was finally freed and the information of the world could finally be spoken freely. I really do believe we're on the right side of history. And if you were to ask me if there's anything worth dying for, it would be for the freedom of humanity and to be on the right side of history. So I agree with you absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And well, I'm just generally in favor of civilization and the furtherance of civilization. And I think we should always be concerned that we can regress as a civilization. And if you study history, 
just you, you just see the the arc of of one civilization after another as the civilizations rise and fall through history. We've been in a period of civilization rising very rapidly, but we should be concerned that it it may we may be cresting, we may subside. And there I have to there are many times where I've, I get late stage civilization vibes, you know, and I'm just worried that maybe we're cresting as a civilization and have set it for a fall. So, yeah. Well, I agree with you because I truly believe, and a lot of people have ever said this before me, this is not original idea, but I think as AI and machines and tech increases, a lot of people are going to be deemed useless by the overlords. And then you have to sit and decide what are they going to do with all these people who have hopes and dreams and they want healthcare and they want a garden and they want a house to live in and they don't want to be treated like cattle. They're going to become extremely inconvenient. So I don't think many people at home understand that this war cannot be avoided. I've had a lot of people who understand why they threw me in jail in Romania and understood I've done nothing wrong. And they said to me, why do you take up this fight? Why you don't just delete your Twitter and disappear and drive a Ferrari all day? And I explained that this war cannot be avoided. You're either on the front line and you're fighting for something or you're sitting waiting to die. You're waiting for the Mongol horde to come over the horizon and chop your head off. There's, no, I there's totally no agree. Out of it. And just to throw this in there, if you read the Elon I knew you were doing great work. When I saw you six months ago at the World Government Summit, where they're all saying we're going to make everybody eat bugs and we'll make the decisions to put microchips in them, and you said, we don't want a centralized system. We want a diverse system. We want firewalls. And I don't agree with this Tower of Babel you're building. They know that we go through cycles, and they want to artificially create a great reset collapse, in their own words, to make everybody else poor, consolidate power, and they'll have a smaller type two civilization for themselves. And I think you're trying to build a type two civilization or even a type one civilization, I should say, for all of us. And, right. and you said we, we need to have a debate about, we need to have a debate about going interstellar. We've got to expand yeah. or we collapse. And Elon Musk is saying, correct me if I'm wrong, we, you don't stay in stasis. You either expand right. or you collapse. Yeah, exactly. You either grow or, you're, or, you, or you collapse. You, you don't, the steady state is basically an impossibility. So you have to pick it, you have to pick, make a choice. Do you want to grow civilization or do you want to decline and collapse? And because you know, it's steady state is, it's not stable. So, and I say we grow and I say we expand and we, we have more humans and we become a multi class species in a space faring civilization and ultimately be out there among the stars. And I think that is the, the exciting, inspiring thing for, for the future, N not a declining human civilization that dwindles to nothingness and where humanity dies with a whimper. And that's the bottom line. I think it is the battle of people who believe in humans and humanity and want it to expand against people who are so selfishly going through the earth and so selfishly oriented that they don't care about expanding civilization. They just want to control the humans that are currently here. And, and Andrew, not, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Let me throw this caveat on it because I've read the writings of Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab and the Club of Rome. They know we could easily expand. There's plenty of room, hundreds of millions of known galaxies. They know that this is just a seed that's going to not just grow into one giant oak, but an entire forest, an entire universe. And so they want to shut everybody else down because they can't build a competition. Elon Musk to come out of the general public. They want a global tyranny so they can direct it and control it so that they direct the expansion. And we can't let that happen because they literally talk about Agenda 20, the official UN plan, a 90% world population. So we need to go with the Elon Musk plan. And that's why I tell people that get upset. They go, Elon Musk is involved in every advancing technology. The globalists are pushing that too. Well, technology is like a gun. It's whose hand it's in. And so we need the gun in the people's hands, the gun of expansion, instead of in the globalist hands. And so just because Elon Musk is on the cutting edge of every technology, don't fear the technology like some troglodyte. Fear us not being in control of it. And Elon is saying we need it to be an expansionary human explosion of competition and freedom, not some new dark age with a tiny breakaway civilization that's only working for itself. Sorry, I'm ranting. But no, but you're completely right. Because if Elon doesn't push these boundaries, they will push these boundaries. And once they have the sole control and the monopoly over such technologies, it's over for all of us. And I don't think most people understand. It simply is the humanistic view against the death cult view. And there's people in the world who have yes. no interest in, they have no interest in growing humanity, no interest in advancing the species as a whole. Their interest is in power True. and control. And all they want to do is have absolute power over the people that currently exist. And you can talk about all the perverse reasons they want to do those exact things, but it's truly scary. And all the people at home who don't really understand the gravity of this fight, they seem to think it's right wing, left wing. Hot yes, exactly. Don't think about it the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, it's got a little extra. You're totally, exactly. This right, left, it's the wrong way to think about it. It's the, the sort of the, 
extinctionist versus the pro-humans. And once you see that it's extinctionist versus the human, the pro-humans, then it becomes very clear. So Elon, when are you going to, I know you got a hundred irons to the fire, but I've really, when you talk about, we need to create a, a plan B for humanity. Well, that's really that's plan, not a plan B. It's a, I mean, I think an alternate master plan because the globalists oh. are controlled right now. You're trying to rest control with us helping. I mean, when are you going to put out your battle plan or are you already putting it out of pieces? No, I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is that actually, I think we, we should expand humanity. Like basically we should have basically more, more kids, you know, population should increase and, and we should become a, a multi-planet species and, and, and you know, make life multi-planetary, build a self-sustaining civilization on Mars. And then ultimately, you know, this will be long after I'm dead, probably, but well, almost certainly we can go to other star systems and go out there and I don't know, maybe we'll find some long dead alien civilizations. And I'm, I don't think we want to be one of those lame one planet civilizations that never got beyond, it, you know, its own planet. I mean, we got to, you know, you know, the aliens are going to think of that. It's like, we, 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 we got to make a good showing. Team human. Let's yeah, go. And that would Absolutely, and that would be key. certainly disappointing. But it's essential, and truthfully, it's so amazing we even speak about these things. Only two years ago, you couldn't even speak about these subjects, but it's so pertinently obvious to anyone who pays attention, and it is scary. And expansion and humanistic views are certainly the way to progress, and it has to be done. There's no other way, just like a business, just like you guys said, if you stand still, you die. And uh, it takes a few brave people to, to break the matrix. You have to break the dam, and I think bravery is so important because it puts a crack in the dam and it shows that if there's people out there brave enough to risk getting canceled, risk yeah, law, right. risk lawfare, then it's going to inspire bravery amongst the rest of the populace. And it becomes extremely hard to lie to brave. And, and I think that's one of the largest pandemics of earth today is bravery. And when I say bravery, I don't mean that in any kind of negative connotation. Bravery is being full of love and loving the people around you and sticking up for your community and loving where you live and loving your country. And it's brave to do those things. And it's love. What are the globalist pieces? Children are bad. We're ugly. Humans uh, create you know, all this racial division. They want us to hate each other. So we just yeah. give up, roll over so the globalists can have the future. I would just yeah, like to I say here. The globalists are, are short-sighted too, because the, the, the thing is that you can't really separate yourself from civilization. So I think those who are sort of advocating, like, like it's really, I think it's just logical to be pro-civilization. You don't actually necessarily have to be altruistic. You just have to think long-term and say, obviously you cannot exist in a good way without civilization. I mean, just look at, watch one episode of Naked and Afraid and see how much you want to go live in a forest by yourself. We're, it's, we're it's, in a very, it's not very, we're in a super pivotal moment now. And the reason we're in a pivotal moment is because the machines cannot do the policing as of yet. My brother and I often True. talk about how bad COVID would have been if they had Terminator machines. You didn't have your mask on. You couldn't even appeal to the empathy of the person who knew how insane it all was. As soon as the yeah. machines control the policing, it's absolutely over. And we're not that far away. So we're in a very pivotal period now where the bravery that's required to resist the globalist oppression has to happen now. Soon the technology absolutely, will exist and it's I over for everybody. We are at critical crossroads right now in the entire future of the human destiny. And, and I called it plan B, but I mean, Elon, what do you call it? Just an alternate plan for humanity? Because we should have a debate because, because the Black Rocks and the globalists are right now in control. If they were 100% control, you and others felt rested, but maybe they're in 80% control. They're losing control very quickly as people discover what they're doing. But what, what would you call the debate and discussions about a pro-human future? Just team humanity? Yeah, team humanity. Absolutely. That sounds like, that sounds good. But, I, you know, I think, like, something that's, that, that is really important is, like, you just literally have to have kids or there's no next generation. Alex, do you, do you have kids? Yes, I do. I'm not as prolific as you, but I wish I was. It's the best thing in my life. I have four. Okay, great. And Andrew? I do a few. I won't let you down, Elon. I'm coming. I'm okay, coming good. to take over your title. I'm coming to take <laughs> over. I'm doing my best. You know, I, I'm okay. going to use my good looks for something. Well, I think, I, we, I think we ought to encourage people to, to you know, have kids. And, and, and this just... is the bottom line argument. This is what is so important. We just talked about how the globalists are ultimately selfish and only care well, about... Well, most of the globalists don't have children. And yeah, of yeah, course, but, because but, they're right. selfish. Here's the thing. You, you, guys, you guys are all attacking the globalists, but if you ask a globalist, like, I have friends who would I would consider globalists. If you ask them, their ideologies are aligned that they believe that somebody living across the world is just as valuable as somebody who lives in America. And I know, you know, there's oh, they've already enslaved the third world. And then that's not how everybody who you would categorize as no, you're right. there's a lot of useful no, idiot global not, globalists at the top are depopulationists. That's oh, their so, religion. So, so maybe if you want to look at the top, you can say globalists at the top, some of them might have that view, but 
you know, if you just talk to an ordinary person who views themselves as a globalist, they're not saying, oh, you know, I'm evil. I'm, they're not an evil person. They just have this belief that every, every per, human being around the globe is equal. That's I would call that an internationalist. So, That's an internationalist. A globalist wants one world government run by corporations. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you can label them differently, but I think if you talk to somebody... Well, Henry Kissinger gonna... was a globalist. Bigner Brzezinski was a globalist. I'm not trying to be mean to you, but their number one rule is the earth is too small. We can't expand. We've got a bean count and put everybody on rations. We've got a social engineer and in the normal human program because humans are failed. They want to turn us into factory farm humans. Those well, are a lot of survival. I'll, 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 I'll answer me, the question. Sorry, guys. If, if, I, if I just say, like, some of these titles are a little confusing. If, so, if, someone's, if say someone's an internationalist or a globalist, I, I think where what can achieve some disambiguation here is to say, like, did, does someone have as an axiomatic belief that there are too many people on the earth or do they not? Do they, have, do they believe that the Earth can sustain the current population, or do they think it cannot? Now, the, the reality is Earth can actually handle a, a human population probably 10 times larger than the current yes. population. Earth is actually very sparsely populated by humans. We only see density because if we're in a, a dense urban environment like New York or, or Boston, London, or something like that. But if, like, here would be like a good test. If you took a plane from LA to New York and you try to drop a bowling ball and hit somebody, you, your chances of success are basically zero. You, you'd have to drop 10,000 bowling balls, maybe. Yes. You, you just, and, and I'll, I'll tell you sort of something that, that may scare people a little bit, is that th there are thousands of objects falling onto Earth from space all the time. But how often do you hear about so someone actually getting hit by falling right. by meteorites? Absolutely. It's if there's one known case of a woman at her house getting hit by one. E Elon, yeah. I would just respond to Ed, actually, for a second, because, again, when... It comes, I want to, I think it's good to get a good counter view here. I think that there's two different things going on it. And I know what you're, I know what you're trying to say. There's a separate point about your obligations, right? So you can, and I believe a lot, everything has been said about the importance of expansionism for humanitarian, for humanity being pro-civilization and expansion, pro-human race to win. That's like a separate axis though, from saying, where are your obligations where you are, right? So we talked about procreation and family. Then we talked about the nation. Well, look, I'm, I have two kids. As a father, my moral obligation, I believe, is first and foremost to my family. And then let's say as a president, my moral obligation is to the citizens of the nation that I lead. And then you can worry about hunger in the Congo or whatever else needs to happen in the Darfur or in other places. And so I don't think that you're saying necessarily that life- Charity begins at home. Charity exactly. And that's home. not saying that life abroad is any less valuable inherently. And so when you say like the globalist view is that all it's saying is that all life is equal wherever it is on earth. It's not like I think the view, an alternative view is countering that. There's also just a separate place in terms of where you're situated, where's your obligation? Right is as a father, it's to your family. As a president, it's to your country. And just because you believe that's the hierarchy of your obligations means somebody else is a leader of one of those other countries, and that's an obligation that they have too. But that's like a different discussion. Well, the neoliberals, yep. they, the neoliberals, in their own PR, they're the ones doing the worst things on the earth. They just say, "Oh, we want global government because we want to give Africa's representation." Then they lock them down for three years and starve thirty million of them to death, and then organize them to flood us is a political underclass. This is cold-blooded Henry Kissinger, State Department Memorandum 200. I mean, yeah. it, it got I, 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 it, it, it's not black and I white. I think it was two right? different conversations. Like, what, Wait, what is, can, can what, we just, is, I'm sorry, just black and white. Go ahead, Andrew, go ahead, Andrew, and then we'll go to Dave. Andrew? Okay. What, what, what I do believe is black and white is simply, if you read a history book, you'll see the worst things that humanity have ever done have been done with good intentions. That's what's so bad about evil acts is that people Rope think they're doing the right thing. And that's the most dangerous thing about it. And this idea that they look at all human life as sacred and all the same, I actually disagree. I think the reason they will prioritize people in a third world country, for example, you'll say it's because they see us as equal. I think it's because they see us now as spoiled and annoying. They don't like that we need pensions and living space and healthcare. They simply want slaves and a robot class and they'll do anything it takes to get it and they'll get it from anywhere they can. And when someone comes along and says, well, my intentions are good, I'm not interested in that because you can name any Holocaust or any atrocity in, in history. The people didn't think they were the bad guys. They often thought they were the, the good guys. And I guess the easy way to look at life is you want, you want to be having as many children as possible. You want to pray other people do the same and you want those people to enjoy freedom. And anyone who's coming along restricting speech, restricting access to certain things, restricting movement, restricting, all they're doing is trying to restrict so they can control. And nobody in a history book ever who did that either was the good guy. I think it's very clear to see who's on the right side of history and who isn't. 
And I advocate freedom for everybody. If I have disagreed with absolutely everything Alex said, I'd still be glad he's back on, on X. And these people can't even handle a different opinion. Do you think they're going to allow the people of a different opinion to them to share water or share food or share anything else? once they? And the reason they control? don't want another opinion is they want to misrepresent what Elon Musk or Andrew Tate or Vivek Ramaswamy or any of I'm telling you, they want us silenced so they can lie about what we, what we said. I, quick, I agree quick, with you. I have, like, a, I, I have I, a quick question. Jackson, I'm going to go to you right after uh, Dave. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. just saying, I, I agree that with you there. I think that a lot of the media and a lot of these platforms do want to silence voices because they want their voice to be heard louder. So, yeah, I, I definitely hear you there. I, I definitely don't. I definitely, as when it comes to globalists, I think, you know, it's not black and white. You're not either a globalist or you're not. I think people fall in between and they have there's different reasons for why people might feel one way about one, you know, you could say globalist idea and another. So, so I, I mean, I, I don't like painting people like, you know, in, with a black and white pen because I, I feel that everybody falls somewhere in the middle. All Can I, I just know say is this, what? that there are people that want a corporate world government whose aim is depopulation, not giving the general public access to technology by lying about resources and literally saying carbon dioxide that plants breathe is evil and then telling us the world's going to end in 2030 and the ice caps are all going to melt and none of that's true. So our children basically give up on the future decide not to have children. That's all I'm saying. And Elon Musk is promoting an optimistic pro-human future that the science and evidence shows is real and that we need. Gentlemen, I have to yeah, go. Yeah. I just, I just oh, want to be so, so, exactly. I want to be clear about yeah, my position. Right. I'm super pro-human and I mean all humans. You know, humans in America, humans it, it, Africa, got their and everywhere Everybody's else. Got their phone open to the bathroom. Yeah, that's Vivek. Vivek, that's your phone, Vivek. I'm not able to mute you. Vivek, go ahead, Elon. Sorry about that. So, uh, well, I hope you feel better. I now. feel great. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. So, yeah, you know, I'm super pro-human, like for Team Humanity here, and and I just think we want to make sure that people have a positive view of the future. And in, like, I think I, I encounter a lot of people who have actually very pessimistic conclusions about the future. And if you say, if you try to unpack that and say, where does that pessimism come from? And I think like, these are like, you know, good people, like they have good intentions. I think they think about things can come from is believing that the, that there are too many humans on the planet. This is false. Earth can easily sustain far more than the current population. And, but, but they've been told this thing and they believed it and it is false. And I'm very pro environment, obviously Bye, Andrew. I, I, I might've done more about more, you know, I'm certainly. I might have done more, you know, for sustainable energy than maybe any single human. So I, you know, I would consider myself an environmentalist, but I also believe in, in, in physics and reality and, and not sort of being alarmist about things. And well, I'll, something you said was really smart. And obviously I've seen the equations, I'm not a mathematician or rocket scientist like you, but we need the fossil fuels to get to the new technologies and trans is, you can't yes. cut them all off and then not have it to they're blowing up the bridge that gets them there. I would like, what I would I, like to say, my, my final point, I would like to say, I often get asked by people who follow me, they say, who do you think who controls the world? Who do you think the matrix is? And I use the matrix as a very simple way to explain that they purport a false version of reality that everyone buys into to keep your mind occupied so they can extract your body heat from you for the soulless machines, which are essentially, essentially the globalists we're talking about. And I try and say that I still believe that we run the world. There's a lot more of us than them. We still control the world. It's just down to what we will accept and what will allow them to do to us. And that's why bravery is so essentially and so essential and so important. And I know I can come across as brash with my message. No, but no you're telling, not. I'm telling 16 year olds when I'm telling 16 year olds to go and get rich and buy a fast car and train hard and go to the gym, et cetera, because these young men are far less likely to blindly comply. And it's extremely important that they don't sigh off the next generation of young masculine youth. And, and that's why the still, system was scared of you, Andrew. Because you were doing a version of it to shock them out of it, to show them how to have a destiny, how to have desire, how to want to be into the future. And that's well, the same thing. In a different you're right. We still control the world and it's down to what we will accept. And it's going to take bravery and love. You need to love the people around you and love the human race and love the place you're from. And I just want to wrap up by saying that I would never kill myself. And if they put me back in that dungeon to starve, I hope you will all do your very best to get me out. Because I'm in a very we will, Andrew. Love situation. you. Can I just throw something out? Because I'm going to talk to Elon Musk here and everybody else. And this is surreal. Andrew Tate and Vivek Ramaswamy. This is crazy. John, I've got a friend I want to get on. We also have Mark Dice, who's really stood up for free speech. He's on the line. If he can get a question. I'm going to leave Alex. In. But I just want to say hey, welcome on Twitter. And I think there will be more truth than not. All else equal. So hail to the Thank truth. Thank you, gentlemen. Take Thank it easy, guys. Bye-bye. Bye.